Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the Cathedral Church of St. Mark. Thank you for joining us for online worship. O God, the Father, creator of heaven and earth, have mercy upon us. O God, the Son, redeemer of the world, have mercy upon us. O God, the Holy Ghost, sanctifier of the faithful, have mercy upon us. O holy, blessed, and glorious Trinity, one God, have mercy upon us. Remember not, Lord Christ, our offenses, nor the offenses of our forefathers, Neither reward us according to our sins. Spare us, good Lord, spare thy people, whom thou hast redeemed with thy most precious blood, and by thy mercy preserve us forever. Spare us, good Lord, from all evil and wickedness, from sin, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, and from everlasting damnation. Good Lord, deliver us from all blindness of heart, from pride, vainglory, and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred, and malice, and from all want of charity. Good Lord, deliver us from all inordinate and sinful affections, from all the deceits of the world and the flesh and the devil. Good Lord, deliver us from all false doctrine, heresy, and schism, from hardness of heart, and contempt of thy word and commandment. Good Lord, deliver us from lightning and tempest, from earthquake, fire, and flood, from plague, pestilence, and famine. Good Lord, deliver us from all oppression, conspiracy, and rebellion, from violence, battle, and murder, and from dying suddenly and unprepared. Good Lord, deliver us by the mystery of thy holy incarnation, by thy holy nativity and submission to the law, by thy baptism, fasting, and temptation. Good Lord, deliver us by thine agony and bloody sweat, by thy cross and passion, by thy precious death and burial, and by thy glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Ghost. Good Lord, deliver us in all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death and in the day of judgment. Good Lord, deliver us. We sinners do beseech thee to hear us, O Lord, and that it may please thee to rule and govern thy whole church universal in the right way. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, and that it may please thee to illumine all bishops, priests, and deacons with true knowledge and understanding of thy word, and that both by their preaching and living they may set it forth and show it accordingly. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, and that it may please Please thee to bless and keep all thy people. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, and that it may please thee to send forth laborers into thy harvest and draw all mankind into thy kingdom. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, and that it may please thee to give all people increase of grace to hear and receive thy word, and to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, and that it may please thee to bring into the way of truth all such as have erred and are deceived. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, and that it may please thee to give us a heart to love and fear thee, and diligently to live after thy commandments. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, and that it may please thee so to rule the hearts of thy servants, the President of the United States, and all others in authority, that they may do justice and love mercy and walk in the ways of truth. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, and that it may please thee to make wars to cease in all the world, to give all nations unity, peace, and concord, and to bestow freedom upon all peoples. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, and that it may please thee to show thy pity upon all prisoners and captives, 
the homeless and hungry, and all who are desolate and oppressed. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, and that it may please thee to give and preserve to our use the bountiful fruits of the earth, so that in due time all may enjoy them. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, and that it may please thee to inspire us in our several callings to do the work which thou hast given us to do with singleness of heart as thy servants and for the common good. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, and that it may please thee to preserve all who are in danger by reason of the their labor or their travel. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, and that it may please thee to preserve and to provide for all women in childbirth, young children and orphaned, orphans, the widowed, and all whose homes are broken or torn by strife. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, and that it may please thee to visit the lonely, to strengthen all who suffer in mind, body, and spirit, and to comfort with thy presence those who are failing and infirm. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, and that it may please thee to support, help, and comfort all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, and that it may please thee to have mercy upon all mankind. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, and that it may please thee to give us true repentance, to forgive us all our sins, negligences, and ignorances, and to endue us with the grace of thy Holy Spirit to amend our lives according to thy holy word. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, and that it may please thee to forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, and that it may please thee to strengthen such as do stand, to comfort and help the weak-hearted, to raise up those who fall, and finally to beat down Satan under our feet. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, and that it may please thee to grant to all faithful departed eternal life and peace. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord, that it may please thee to grant that in the fellowship of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, Saint Mark, our patron, and all the saints, we may attain to thy heavenly kingdom. We beseech thee to hear us, good Lord. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. O Christ, hear us. O Christ, hear us. Kyrie eleison. Christ eleison. Kyrie eleison. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations, and as you know the weakness of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, as for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. 
When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation, In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love, and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord, therefore he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right, and teaches his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness to those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. 
the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Perhaps the uh, most difficult patients to treat are the ones who don't believe or won't admit they're sick. In the interest of full disclosure, I count myself in that obstinate group of stiff-necked Israelites, the bane of good doctors everywhere. When this happens in a medical setting, it slows things down. The sickness can progress unnecessarily and make the eventual, eventual treatment more drastic and invasive. And the spiritual life is no different. Our first step is the recognition of the truth about ourselves and about our world. We've each fallen short of the glory of God, as Paul reminds us in his letter to the Romans, and our world has not yet, extra, extra, read all about it, it's not yet come to resemble the kingdom. The purpose of the church is to heal us, our relationships with each other, our relationships with creation, our relationship with God through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. The church, in one of its earliest formulations, was seen as a hospital whose purpose was to heal. That's right, the church's primary role through prayer, participation in the sacraments, dwelling on God's word as revealed in Holy Scripture, acts of mercy, witnessing to justice and peace, and working for a more just and equitable social order through the process of forgiveness and reconciliation. The purpose of the church is to heal, to cure souls. In the earliest days of Christianity, the parable of the Good Samaritan was read unapologetically, allegorically, as broken humanity who's been beaten, robbed, and tossed in the ditch. Jesus as the one who comes to rescue us. And the church is the hospital where, the, where injured humanity beset upon by brigands recovers and heals. That word we hear without blinking over and over in church and especially in the great litany, mercy, actually comes from the same Greek root as olive oil, a substance that, which was widely used, as you know, in the ancient world as a soothing agent, a balm for the healing of minor cuts and bruises. Some of you have by now, I hope, heard of Bishop Curry's Jesus Movement. It's simply a contemporary recasting of an ancient time-honored image of the church as a place, a community, a matrix of healing. He describes the Jesus movement as the ongoing community of people who center their lives on Jesus and follow him into loving, liberating, and life-giving relationship with God, each other, and creation. Centering our lives on Jesus, we're healed to become water to wash, oil to heal, bread to feed, and wine to slake the thirst of the parched. Like so much of what Bishop Curry does, it's a recovery of an ancient image of being church done in the service of opening up new possibilities for the present 
and the future. Anglicans go back not out of mere fondness or nostalgia, but in order to see afresh, to renew the present. We are an ancient future church. So the church exists for healing. Jesus himself says that he comes not for those who have their ducks in a row, but for those who are hurting, wounded, sick, and in need of healing. When Jesus heard this, he said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners. Does that mean that Jesus is only here for those notorious sinners and not for the rest of us good, upstanding citizens? Wouldn't that mean that Jesus is not, in fact, for all, but only for the unfortunate few and certainly not for us perfect little peaches? No, Jesus is saying something quite different and far more liberating. Jesus, the divine physician, the source of all healing and the means of our cure, is telling us that we're all sick. Healing is available to all, but because Jesus is unconditional love, he won't treat us against our will. There's no compulsion in love. It takes the consent of the patient for treatment to begin. It takes an admission that something is off in us and our relationships and how we treat God's good creation and in our relationship with God. It takes an admission of need, an admission that going it alone under our own steam just doesn't work anymore. It takes asking for help. It takes the willingness to take the risk of vulnerability, the willingness to be in relationship with the divine physician, the willingness to admit that we've missed the mark. Welcome to the human race. It takes the willingness, of course, to let ourselves be loved and then loved into loving others. The season of Lent, which we begin today, is a season of healing, a season of coming closer to Jesus, the divine physician, putting ourselves in his care and letting the oil of mercy love us whole. Through prayer, fasting, almsgiving, works of mercy, and nourished by God's word and sacraments, we are gradually healed of all that is not God's love in us. Slowly, sometimes, yes, painfully, we let go, we surrender our greed, anger, our pretensions to being independent, self-reliant actors and fall ever more deeply into love. We're made to participate even here, even now, in this life, in the glory of God. We're made to be partakers of divine nature, to embark in Christ on the journey into our full humanity. Anything that is not God ultimately disappoints and provides but fleeting satisfaction. Without God, without the recognition of our need for God, of recognizing our illness and need for healing, we know only gnawing ache, the pervasively vapid creep of non-existence that permeates our days. We find ourselves living in what T.S. Eliot in the Wasteland calls that unreal city under the brown fog of a winter moon where there is but a heap of broken images where the sun beats and the dead tree gives no shelter, the cricket no relief, and the dry stone, no sound of water. W.H. Auden, in his tribute to Eliot, writes, it was you who, not speechless with shock, but finding the right language for thirst and fear, did most to prevent a panic. 
Auden praises Eliot as a skilled prophetic diag di diagnostician uh, for naming the sickness, for giving voice to the thirst and fear that beset England after the Great War. The Wasteland was published in 1922. And Eliot is the one who gives voice to that fear, that thirst, that hunger. Remember, that was supposed to be the war that ended all wars. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. So these 40 days, these 40 days are a precious and perhaps last. Who's to say? Opportunity to come near to the kingdom of God that has come near to us in the person of Jesus. The desert into which we follow Jesus is shorn of all the usual distractions, emptied of all the usual ways we're etherized like a patient upon a table. The deeply patterned and habitual ways we plug our ears to the good doctor's healing words. These 40 days are a time when we make a little space for God to get at us in the stillness, in the silence, in the simplicity, that we might become who we are created to be, that this world might come to more closely resemble the wedding feast of the Lamb. Two questions as we embark. What can we trim back in our lives to make a little more room for God? And what new practice, habit, or disposition can we commit to that will help us to hearken to his voice and nourish our relationship with Jesus Christ? Now, just in case we didn't get the message that Lent is for our healing and not just a process of beating ourselves up, our three readings for today all talk about water and baptism, death and rebirth, new creation, the establishment of an undying covenant of love, provision, and mercy between God and God's people. Do you remember what the dove, the same dove that appeared at Jesus' baptism, I wonder? Do you remember what the dove came back with to the ark when the rains had stopped? an olive branch. God's messenger brings the oil of mercy, loving kindness, and covenantal faithfulness to the waterlogged crew on the ark. When we baptize in the Episcopal Church. There are those lines in the small print before the service that nobody reads, but that really say it all. The bond which God establishes in baptism is indissoluble. How many times have you heard people say, I got to get my kid baptized? As if it were something we, through the priest, do, a box to check. But that's not what the prayer book says. It speaks instead of the bond, the fireman's hold that God establishes. Exactly the reverse. Baptism is God's work on us. It's an outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace. The covenant that God establishes that nothing but nothing can break. God reaches out, takes hold, and doesn't let go. God comes to us as loving kindness and mercy, the oil of gladness, in the beak of a bird, in those healing waters of belovedness that rain down on us, not just at our baptism, but in every moment. 
For I am convinced, says Paul, in that astounding climax of chapter 8 of the letter to the Romans, that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Even judgment, trials, the inevitable deserts that open up in our lives when seen from this perspective are doorways to deeper and deeper surrender, deeper and deeper union and communion with God in Christ through the Holy Spirit. When at effort's end, we find ourselves finally uttering those words, Lord, help me. God never fails to provide a way through the waters that rise sometimes up to our necks. It may not be that our illness is cured, our bank account suddenly overflowing, the social inequalities that so plague us magically resolved at the drop of a hat bud. God hears our cry and God is faithful to God's promises. We're never left comfortless. We're never left orphaned when out of our lostness, our littleness, our lastness, and deadness and sin, we speak our need. God's mercy opens a way where there was no way. Blessed assurance in the midst of everything being seemingly lost. Even tempted by Satan, with the wild beasts all around, angels do indeed wait on us and minister to us, pouring that healing oil of God's undying, unconquerable love on our scraped and bruised souls. The hospital is always open. By day or night, it will never be shut. The divine physician is always on call. He never sleeps, and all he wants is to make us well, to draw us home from that far country where we munch insatiably on the pig pods of self-sufficiency. He's paid the bill with his very life and waits for that single word, that mustard seed, of, con of consent, help, to then slather us in his healing oil that we might be that oil for a broken and hurting world. Have a blessed Lent. Amen. Standing as we are able, let us affirm the faith of the church in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, Father the, the Almighty, Almighty. Maker, Maker of, of heaven, heaven and earth, of, of all that is, seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are on page 10. Brothers and sisters, Christ suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring us to God. Let us pray to the God of our salvation, saying, Show us your ways, O God. 
and, and teach, teach us, us your, your paths. You, O oh God, have saved us through the cleansing waters of baptism, and you have called us to minister in the name of your Son. Send us out today to proclaim the good news of the kingdom of God. We pray especially for those who are preparing for baptism. Stir up in them a yearning for the bread of life and the cup of salvation. We pray also for those preparing to be confirmed and received at Pentecost. Show us your ways, O God. And teach us your paths. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes, righteous God. Deliver the vulnerable from those who would seek to exploit them. Work through us to bring about a just and peaceful world. Show us your ways, O God. And teach us your paths. Almighty God, you have made a covenant of peace with every living creature that is on the earth. Make us mindful of those creatures with whom we share this planet. May we live in this world with greater respect for everything around us. Show us your ways, O God. And teach us your paths. O Lord, defend those who are assailed by any variety of temptation. Give them strength in their weakness. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Show us your ways, O God. And teach us your paths. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love. In your mercy, send your healing grace to those in need, especially Tom and Yuri, Sue and the Pradas family, Rebecca Davenport and Bunny Davenport, Alice and David, Suzanne and Bucky, and for all those affected by the storms and power outages in Texas. Those on our parish prayer list and those we name either silently or aloud. Show us your ways, O God. And teach us your paths. Jesus Christ, all authorities and powers are subject to you, even the powers of death. We pray for those who have died, especially Bob Pradas, even as we look in hope to the day of resurrection. Show us your ways, O God. And teach us your paths. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy, and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace, which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, your, your will be done, be done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our, our daily bread. bread. Forgive, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For, For the kingdom, the power, and the, and the glory are yours, now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen.
Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. the gifts of God for the people of God. ever mindful of our brothers and sisters, those members of the one body who are prevented from receiving Holy Communion, let us pray together the prayer at the top of page 16. Faithful, Faithful God, God, in the in wonder, wonder of your wisdom and love, love you, you fed, fed your people in the wilderness, wilderness with the bread of angels, and you sent Jesus to be the bread of life. Though your people cannot consume these gifts of bread and wine, we thank you that they have received the forgiveness of sins and all other benefits of Christ's passion. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we embody your desire and be renewed for your service. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. And continuing with the post-communion prayer, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bow down before the Lord. Grant almighty God that your people may recognize their weakness and put their whole trust in your strength so that they may rejoice forever in the protection of your loving providence. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.